y'all, I have to sit in this chair, this creaky chair right now, because for some reason, this camera does not want to focus. So thank you so much for joining me. This is video number two about Egypt, about Cairo, and all 11 of us, I feel a kindred spirit. I feel closeness. Oh, you feel that love? So yeah, why I went to Cairo, um, what my experience was like working and living and having fun and meeting all these people, and what was my ending perspective on being in Cairo and if I recommend it. So let's get into the video. A couple years ago, I was still in college in my university, Portland State, I know, Oregon. So I went to live abroad with a friend in Cairo. And it was just something that, of course, so I'm first generation, my family is a Liberian and Ghanaian, and of course they were very apprehensive and my mom did not want me to go at all. But this is the thing, typical African moms, okay, overprotective, no? Yes, but she's always give, had that faith in me and that's my, that's my girl. Period. But yeah, luckily my friend who I, I went with, she knew an Egyptian family who also lived in Portland. So they took us in our first two weeks while we're trying to find an apartment. That's the thing, once you have people that you actually know, no, Egyptian hospitality is just so open hearted and so welcoming. Okay, let me just put that out there. At least as a African American woman traveling and already know a couple people there. That was my reception. Because we have to be very specific, right? But yeah, so they lived in um, they lived in Cairo, inner city Cairo, but it's a district called um, oh Heliopolis, Heliopolis. So while I'm you know describing it, I'm gonna also be looking at my phone because I'm gonna be looking at the videos that I'm inserting. Okay, just so we we are in sync, honey. Let's stay in sync. Yeah, these are some clips around Cairo. Just, you know, as we're driving from the airport, going to Heliopolis. El Heb is like maybe five minutes from New Cairo, which is where the university was. We had to make a decision whether we wanted to live in Cairo, uh, which would have been so much more fun, period. Or live close to the university that we were attending. But it's our apartments was nice. So I'll show a short clip of my balcony. Um, this was looking over Al Hab, which is where we found the apartment. I'm going to show some clips of in the background. You can kind of see like how it looks. It was a two bedroom. I had the master and my friend had the second bedroom. And then it was, we had a kitchen, a separate kitchen, the dining room, the living room, and then we had a family room. Don't mind these filters, guys. Because you know 2016 was the height of the filter. Okay. One dollar was 34 point something Egyptian pounds. So our dollar stretched and for a broke ass college student, you can really live a life. So then let's fast forward. First day of school was crazy. Um, the international students had a group and they like took us through, you know, West Bellet, so downtown. And we got to go to this place called Hana Halili, which is where you see this guy with the monkey, um, just chilling on him. I love Africa, bro. I love Egypt so much. The monkey's just chilling. That's it. The monkey chilling. You see all these different shisha. I don't know if you can see this. My baby's right here, of course. Um, we also got to, of course, go to the pyramids. Um, pyramids kind of overlook the city. I didn't know that the uh, Giza, so the pyramids that are in Giza. And I didn't know it kind of overlooked, as you see there. That's me with my kafia. I thought I was doing something, honey. They said that kafia was from Saudi Arabia. Like it was authentic. So I had to buy it. Was, it could have been from his cousin's basement, but hey, I love it. I still don't know and I still don't care. They took us to see obviously the mosques and the churches and the synagogue. Obviously Egyptians are of the Abrahamic religion. There's a Christian presence, there's a Muslim presence and there's a Jewish presence, obviously less so because of if you know politics, you know politics, but um, they still have um, the Ben Ezra synagogue standing, right? So this is inside. You can see the menorah. Um, here's a shot of the church. One of the churches we went inside, it was in session, so we had to be very quiet. I felt so disrespectful at all. 
Let me go. Let me go sit in a pew. Okay. Everything about the places of worship were beautiful. And you see, was so beautiful. I don't know if you've seen the campus, but here's a shot. It literally looks like you know just a desert resort. Seriously, that university has money, but I also came there for a job. Like I was thinking of living there. Seriously, there's an organization called Star, so Student Action for Refugees. And um, I ended up becoming a English instructor for a group of adult age students um, that were refugees from around the region. So Syria, from Yemen, from um, uh, South Sudan. And even I even had like an Egyptian student in the class too. The most fulfilling time in my life, period. You know what I mean? We're all still in contact to this day. It was like real immersive. Like when I go to a country, I wanna be immersed I want to like I'm one of them like that's what I came there for I didn't come there to just project so that's what I did all right now let's talk about the fun let's talk about what we got into so I love Egyptian nightlife is interesting because it's obviously not like Las Vegas or something like you have to make reservations before you go to the club like you need to call you know, they need to write you down on the list this one was the tap I think it's tap east it's just like a regular pub bar. Another great place that a lot of international people go is Cairo Jazz Club. And here is me and my friends looking a mess in the bathroom and just dancing. They played like house-ish music. So, you know, I wasn't like super geek to be there, but it was dope. I liked the, it was a very diverse crowd. But my favorite club was, actually two, my favorite clubs were one, venue which played hip-hop they played all the tunes like what were the 2016 tunes which had the best that like, they played the drake they played migos like, that's why i'm over here looking like a mess y'all that it was so fun look at me a mess and then the african club i don't know what it's called but of course it's called the african club my friend khalid khalud like, he took us to this place it was like it's like in a hotel i think or like a i think it was in a hotel and it was just like this large room and this is the most African people I've ever seen. They had to play my whisk kid, they played Davido, they played, you know, the classics, they played Gawo, all that. We would stay up till 6 a.m. in these places, like, you know, and even in the regular clubs, like 4 a.m. Because it doesn't close. It's kind of like New York hours where I live now, but I'm not there because of Corona. Another thing that we did for fun was go to shows in Cairo and like watch live performances especially of the bedouin a nomadic ethnic group of the i think it's just the north i could be wrong <laughs> everyone wishes yeah and i love the house parties everybody was in there it was so random <laughs> i can't with these videos bro one of my favorite parts though of everything was the feluca boat ride parties like imagine like you're in a boat you're in a felucca on the nile there's lights there's drinks there's you know pe people looking to have a good time and you guys are all together and you can play whatever music you want there's the ox what's the better time like seriously oh i miss them so much y'all this is like i miss Cairo, especially right now that's covid like now nah, I'm missing everything. Even like I, even when I had bad times in Cairo, I missed the bad times. Huh? How does that make sense? Well, okay, so would I recommend travel to Cairo? Yes, I definitely would. I had a great experience there. It was weird because, you know, I would say that before they considered my blackness or my Africanness, they considered my Americanness, and that's not that's not atypical. A lot of people, a lot of countries all over, and they should be Western mannerisms and Westernization to um, money or they allow access to that, right? They allow access to those people. Um, I would definitely recommend having asking your friend to link you with an addition person before you go there if you're traveling alone. Um, be mindful of and respectful of cultural norms. Don't, don't, don't play yourself. When we're out of quarantine, y'all, those are the places to go for fun, to eat. Forgot about eating. Shawarma there, fantastic. The best shawarma in the city, I don't care what anybody says, the best shawarma is in Riverside. It's a club. Riverside, and it's like mini shawarmas. I had never had a better chicken shawarma in my life. 
Um, obviously, politically, if you want me to talk about the politics, we can get into that in a different video. Besides that, I met people that I'll, you know, always be friends with. And when I go back, we'll link. Up. What do you guys think of this look, though? I did the braids. I wanted to keep it like bohemian. I was gonna braid all my hair like Tiana Taylor vibes, but um, I like this like half, half in, half out. And then did a little makeup, like a simple glossy lip on my J Lo. And the fit, just a regular bandeau from ASOS, and the pants are IMG. Uh, thank you for spending the time with me. I love this. Like I forgot what video to push out next. I guess I'll do Thailand. Paris is also coming out because I lived there last year. But Cairo, I love you. Thank you for giving me what you gave me. And I'm, I hope you love me too. I gave you what I could give you. Let me know if you plan to go to Cairo. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you'd like. See you in the next one. Yeah.